गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन सो टूडे वील बी स्टार्टिंग विथ ए न्यू टॉपिक इंफ्रारेड स्पेक्ट्रोस्कोपी ओके सो इन इंफ्रारेड स्पेक्ट्रोस्कोपी वी यूज इंफ्रारेड रेडिएशन इन शॉर्ट वी कॉल इट आयर रेडिएशन सो जस्ट लाइक अवर यू वी विजिबल स्पेक्ट्रोस्कोपी IR spectroscopy is also an absorption spectroscopy absorption spectroscopic method okay <clears throat> we can also use the IR spectroscopy in the reflectance mode we talked about uv visible spectroscopy over there we have seen that we could use it in the absorption spectroscopic method or absorption mode or in the reflectance mode similarly in the infrared spectroscopy also we can have attachments such that we the ir spectroscope it can work in the absorption mode or the reflectance mode so since it is an absorption spectroscopy the uh, basic instrumental you no know, functions they remain the same however there is an uh, what you call uh, there is a change or there is a slight change in the mechanism how the peaks are being detected okay so in the uv visible spectroscopy we talked about the electronic transitions okay however when we were discussing the spectroscopic method we have also discussed about the vibrational transitions and third one we also talked about the rotational transitions okay in infrared spectroscopy the energy content on the of the infrared radiations is not very high and due to this uh, due to this reason the ir radiations they are not able to induce electronic transitions okay on the other hand the vibrational and the rotational transitions they require low energy and the energy which the infrared radiations can transferred to the molecules they are sufficient to initiate the vibrational and the rotational transitions okay so infrared spectroscopy they are also many a times regarded as vibrational rotational spectroscopy spectroscopy this is the important thing and if you look into the electronic transitions uh, this uh, uh, energy levels if you say this is the ground state and then we have the virtual excited state so in between these electronic levels we have certain levels and these levels are vibrational levels and within this level again we have certain more levels these levels are rotational levels so from here 
what information do we get? The information what we get is that when we try to induce electronic transition, the energy that is required, if we plot the energy over here, the energy that is required is the highest electronic transitions. Then for vibrational transitions, vibrational transitions, we have somewhat lower energy is required as compared to the electronic transitions, whereas the minimal, a minimal energy is required to induce rotational transition. Okay. I hope it is clear to all of you. Now, background, as I told you that it is a kind of absorption spectroscopy. Okay. So in this spectroscopy, what happens? Molecules, they absorb certain frequencies of electromagnetic radiations that are characteristics of their structure. That are characteristics of their structure. Okay. In UV visible spectroscopy, it is an important phenomena that we have unsaturation within the molecule unsaturation bonds or unsaturated bonds within the molecules. Then only they will be able to show some UV or visible activity. However, in IS spectroscopy, that is not the case. Okay. Herein, what happens uh, is that we need some resonant frequency of electromagnetic radiations. In this case, the IR radiations. And when there is a match in the frequency between the absorbed, uh, between the, uh, what do you call, the, uh, within the, uh, no, there is a, what do you call, there is a matching of the frequency of the uh, radiation with which you are exciting the molecule and the vibrational and the rotational frequency, then there would be an absorption of the radiation. Okay. So, if you have a molecule, say for example, I am using a triatomic molecule over here and I am incidating or exciting this molecule with a uh, with an IR radiation. So, what we will be having? We will be having that when this lambda will be having a specific wavelength, say lambda A. And suppose this lambda is sufficient to induce the vibrational or the rotational changes of either of the two bonds. And when this lambda A will be matching the vibrational or the rotational frequency of this bond. So bond frequency. Okay. So uh, suppose for this uh, lambda a, we uh, call it there is a frequency a. Okay. So for when this frequency of a, that means frequency of the IR radiation and the frequency of the vibration of the bond, they matches completely, then only there will be an absorption. Okay. And in other frequencies, there will not be any absorptions. Okay. And due to this reason, if you remember your LCR characteristics and if you LCR circuit characteristics, and if you want to analyze any uh, LCR circuit, for each LCR circuit, there used to be a resonant frequency at which there was either an increase in the power or a decrease in the power. Okay. Now, similarly over here also, since at a particular frequency, we are having 
uh, we are able to excite this uh, bond vibration or bond rotation and that frequency when it is matching with each other and then there is an absorption we call these specific frequencies as the resonant frequencies okay and as i already told you <clears throat> this ion radiations they do not have sufficient energy for inducing electronic transitions okay <clears throat> now another important point which we should keep in mind over here is that in ion spectroscopy we are basically looking into the change in the dipole moment change in the dipole moment okay and usually it has been seen that non linear molecules they show better change in the dipole mo uh, moment as compared to the linear molecules why this is so let us take a, a hypothetical situation where we have a triatomic molecule of aba so in this case what is dipole uh, moment say dipole moment is nothing but when a molecule it acquires a delta positive and a delta negative charge and these charges are separated by a bond right so it forms a dipole mom a moment towards the positive charge it will show a dipole moment now here in what would happen a b so say a is delta positive b is delta negative then again we have another b a bond over here also it will be delta positive now what would happen we will be having a dipole moment from b to a and another dipole moment from b to a on the right hand side one dipole moment would be on the left hand side and another dipole moment would be on the right hand side and since the magnitude of these dipole moments because in both these cases we are having a dipole moment which is being created by a ab bond so both will be the same now since they both will be the same what would happen is that they will cancel each other's property and due to this reason we will not find any change in the dipole a moment of the linear molecules and hence <coughs> the uh, what you call this molecules these linear molecules they would become ir inactive okay <coughs> on the contrary <coughs> suppose in this diatomic molecule if we add a b c a again over here if we are having this kind of thing now if you see if you are having delta plus delta minus now we have by introducing c within b and a we have included an atom which will result in the um, what you call variation in the dipole moment in such a cases since we have included another atom to include a variation such that there will be an existence of dipole moment now even though this molecule is a linear molecule it will be ir active okay now coming to the vibrational modes we have discussed about that ir molecules it is a vibrational rotational uh, uh, spectroscopy and over here there will be an induce uh, we will be inducing vibrational and rotational frequencies or transitions okay now there are several transition modes among these uh, vibrational and the rotational transitions 
the vibrational transitions are more prominent. Okay. Now, in these vibrational modes, there are several types of vibrational modes. The first is stretching. So there are two stretching modes or two stretching vibrations. So what is this stretching vibration? Suppose you are having a diatomic molecule A and B. Now there is a bond in between it. Now when we call that it is a bond, we consider that this bond it is behaving as a spring. Okay. So there is A, then there is a spring and there is B. Now what happens is that when we are exciting this molecule with higher radiations, this spring at one moment it gains energy and it stretches out. <clears throat> and in the next instance, it comes down to its original position and again then it stretches out and again it comes back to the original position and in this way in this week um, sorry in this way what it does it tries it is stretching and again relaxing it is again stretching and again it is relaxing so what is it it is nothing but it is an oscillatory uh, way of uh, uh, vibration and it induces a frequency okay and when the uh, this stretching frequency of A and B, it would match the IR wavelength. So at those specific wavelengths, this AB bond will start to vibrate in the stretching mode. Okay. Now, herein we have talked about AB molecule, okay, which is a diatomic molecule. However, in many cases, it is not that simple. So, let us talk about uh, this vibration, this stretching vibration in a triatomic molecule. So, in a triatomic molecule, we are considering that it is a nonlinear molecule. So we are having A, B and B. So suppose this is a triatomic molecule. Now there can be two scenarios in which way this AB bond they may vibrate. In the first way, suppose we call it the first one, the first AB bond as one and the second AB bond as 2. Now these 1 and 2 bonds, they vibrate in sync or they vibrate in synchronization. We call it synchronized vibration. That means when this first bond is stretching, the second bond is also stretching. When the first bond is relaxing the second bond is also relaxing okay so both are in the synchronous mode so both the ab bonds they are stretching together and they are again relaxing together so this type of stretching is called symmetric stretching this type of stretching is called symmetric stretching there can be another scenario where the first bond when it is stretching the second bond it is relaxing and vice versa okay that means the stretching and the relaxing of both the bonds they are not happening in a synchronous fashion. Okay, so synchronization is not there.
okay so there is no synchronization so under this condition we call the stretching vibration as the anti symmetric stretching vibration i hope it is clear that in the vibrational modes there are stretching vibration first category is the stretching vibration and in the stretching vibration we will be having symmetric vibration and anti symmetric vibration okay now the next category of vibration it is called bending vibrations or bending mode of vibration so in this bending mode of vibration there are four modes okay so let us again take this triatomic molecule okay so bending means it is not stretching it is bending the bond is bending in the first case your bond axis is maintained okay the bond axis is maintained so whatever was my wherever i was my axis on that axis only the vibration would be taking place okay so in the stretching vibrations we have that the bond axis are being maintained whether it is the symmetric vibration or it is anti symmetric vibration in the second case in this bending vibrations this bond axis are not maintained okay so there is a change in the uh, bond axis over there okay so axis is being uh, axis is not being maintained the bond axis is not being maintained okay so here in what you have then so again let us take this triatomic molecule a b b now what would happen this molecule this b molecules they may come closer to each other in a synchronous fashion and then again they may try to go away from that central position suppose this is the central position so towards this center it will come together and again they will be moving away from each other okay so when they are moving away from each other again they are doing it in the same fashion so once they are coming together to the central point and from that central point they are going away again in the same fashion so this type of bending is called scissoring is called scissoring okay so why it is called scissoring so if you consider a scissor across this point or the whatever you call the cantilever point u i n t so what is happening when we want to move or cut some paper or something like that we bring this uh, this uh, finger holes towards each other and in a synchronous fashion and again while we are taking away the other one the other ones also moves away in a synchronous fashion so both of these they are coming to the central point and again from that central point they are moving away so <clears throat> this movement it is analogous analogous to the scissoring effect and hence this movement or this bending mode it is called scissoring okay in the second case what is uh, what we uh, what may happen you have this bonds now they are moving in the same direction suppose one is coming towards the central point and the other is moving away and after it has moved to a maximum level then again it will 
come down this uh, first ball it will come down to the central position and the second ball it will try to move away so suppose if you are in a rock concert my drawing is bad so please excuse me for that so what you do if you have to um, uh, what you call uh, if you have to sway the uh, sway uh, sway your hands according to the song so what you would uh, you would do your hand will be swaying in a synchronous fashion like this okay and what we call this movement when we are swaying our hand like this and this so at once we are moving on the left hand side and in the second instance we are moving it on the right hand side in a synchronous way so this we call it rocking of the hands right so accordingly when this kind of movement is seen in the or this kind of bending vibrations are seen in the molecules they are called rocking vibrations and if you see in this in both the scissoring and the rocking vibrations what is happening we are working on a same plane okay so if you are swaying see you are already in the xy plane so if you consider it as xyz this is x y and z so when you do the uh, this swaying or the rocking uh, movement you are doing it in the xy plane when you are doing the scissoring movement you are again doing in the xy plane okay so both these scissoring and the rocking vibrations they are called in plane vibration vibration okay they are called in plane vibration okay on the other hand we have another two vibration which is called wagging and twisting so again we will take this triatomic molecule over here so we are having a b b <coughs> now in scissoring what we are doing they were coming to the point uh, to a single point on the plane whereas in wagging both this a and b they will be coming out of the plane so i am uh, telling this I, I am giving this plus notations it means it is coming towards you at one moment and it then uh, there might be another wagging where these bonds they are moving away from you in the other plane so we can say it so this triatomic molecule let me get some space we have an x we are having y then we are having z so here we are having positive and uh, on the other side we are having the negative z okay so we are having initially we are having this molecule in this fashion okay so what would happen in when it gets excited this would remain over here however the other two bonds sorry they gain entry into the z plane so either it goes to the in this case it is going to the negative plane it may so happen it may 
come out in the positive plane also when these molecules these bonds these ab bonds either they move into the negative z or they come to the positive z but at a time both the molecule both the atoms they are coming into the positive z and or they are going to the negative z at the same time then that function it is called or that vibration it is called varying vibration okay in another case what would happen in the twisting in twisting one would come in the positive z and the other one suppose if i mark this z with the green slide so the second atom it will go to the negative z okay so twisting so if you are having so it will come up and other will come down in the negative z or vice versa it will go back and the other atom it will come up so that is called twisting okay so usually in ir spectroscopy the rotational transitions they are very seldomly seen okay mostly we can see this vibrational uh, what you call transitions and now we get the signal for the vibrational transitions and as i told you the vibrational transitions they can be either in the stretching mode or in the bending mode okay in the bending mode we have four types of uh, bendings scissoring rocking wagging and twisting where scissoring and rocking they are in plane vibration whereas wagging and twisting they are out of plane vibration okay now let us see a cartoon which is there in the wikipedia if you see that it will be much more clearer for you see <clears throat> this one is the symmetric stretching vibration see both these atoms they are coming towards the a atom together and they are moving away again in the same way in the anti symmetric stretching one atom is coming when one atom is coming closer to the central atom the other one is moving out <clears throat> in the scissoring within a blade both the atoms they are uh, both these um, outward atoms they are coming together uh, towards the central position together and they are again moving out Uh, away from it in a uh, synchronous fashion in a in the rocking vibration both the atoms they are moving in one direction at one uh, at the uh, at the same time okay in wagging if you see uh, both the atoms they are coming towards you at the same time and again moving away from you at the same time in twisting what you are having Uh, one of the atom is uh, when one of the atom is coming towards you the at another atom is going away from you right so this is how these vibrations they would work do any of you have any questions up to this part no good <clears throat> so in water we have we do not have this rocking wagging and twisting mode okay rocking wagging and twisting mode so what are the other things we have scissoring and we have stretching which will be there these types of motions of the hydrogen atom represent simple rotation of the whole molecule rather than vibrations within it okay so coming to the emr spectrum of the ir radiations so if you see we have gamma rays on the left hand side 
the energy of this gamma ray is very high and as we move towards the microwave radiations there is a reduction in the energy okay so if you see as i already told you that in uv visible region we have sufficient energy to induce electronic transitions however as we enter into the infrared uh, radiation zone we lose that liberty where we can induce electronic transitions okay this infrared radiations or region it is also being broken down into three regions the first one is near ir region why near because it is nearer to the visible region okay then we have the mid ir region and then lastly we have the far ir region okay so the ir spectroscopy it is mainly confined to mid ir region okay it is mainly confined to mid ir region so the mid ir region they have the wave number of 667 to 4000 cm inverse whereas the wave wave number region of near ir is 4000 to 12500 cm inverse and far ir it is having a wave number of 50 cm inverse to 667 cm inverse now the relationship between frequency and wave number uh, i have already made it clear to you previously so when we have frequency frequency it is given by c by lambda okay and uh, lambda accordingly it becomes c by mu and what is wave number wave number is nothing but 1 by lambda and from here if you calculate it you get that wave number can be written as mu by c okay one of the important thing some sources they label the x axis as frequency as centimeter inverse and other use wave number again which is in the centimeter inverse and that both mean the same thing because if you see the c this is nothing but a constant okay so frequency is number of waves per unit of time whereas wave number is number of a uh, number of waves per uh, unit distance okay yeah frequency in this centimeter inverse it is it should be this second inverse hertz na yeah so some of the common absorption bands so if you see you are having c c i c c l c b r so c f so halogenated carbons they we get this region in this in this region okay then we have co bond c double bond c c double bond n and they usually occur in the region of 1800 to 1500 cm inverse then in the region of 2100 to 2300 we get c triple bond c c triple bond n then nco then ncs ncn then in the region of 2800 to 4000 we have xh atoms so which can be there that like uh, nh oh conh okay and in the region of 3200 to 2800 we predominantly get the ch vibrations now this whole spectrum this whole spectrum say from around 400 cm inverse to 4000 it can be broken down into two regions two absorption regions the first one is functional group okay please keep this in mind the first one is functional group okay and the second one is fingerprint region okay in the functional group region so what happens it is the region which is higher than 1600 cm inverse in some books you will find it is 
1500 cm inverse. Okay. Accordingly, in the finger bit region, if you are writing it as 1500, so you can write it down as less than 1500 in this case. However, I have used as 1600. Okay. So in the functional group region, you will be mainly finding the stretching vibrations. Whereas in the fingerprint region, we usually get the bending vibrations. Okay. So why it is called functional group region and why we call it fingerprint region? The reason being, these, all these groups, if you say NH, OH, CONH, these are functional groups, CH. Okay. So, say for example, I have propanol, CH3, CH2, CH2OH. Okay. Then I have another yen where I have CH3, CHOH, CH3. Okay. If you see the functional groups, what are the functional groups over here? The functional groups are CH, OH, okay, CO. So these are the functional groups. Now, these functional groups, they are same in both propanol and isopropanol. And we will be getting peaks, these peaks, these functional peaks in this region, in this functional group region mainly. Okay. However, the fingerprint region, we will have specific, we will have specific um, this uh, peaks which is uh, specific to a particular molecule. So propanol and the isopropanol, they will be having different fingerprint region. That means the nature of the curves in the fingerprint region of, of propanol and isopropanol will be totally different. However, since the functional groups, they are same in both propanol and, uh, propanol and isopropanol, the, fun, uh, the, uh, the FTIL spectrograph would be similar in both the cases in propanol and isopropanol. However, as I told you, in the fingerprint region, we will be having specific pattern for both propanol and the isopropanol. Okay. So, uh, hence this name comes as the fingerprint. So, why this fingerprint? Because we all know, even though there are two persons, who are identical twins. Even though there are two persons who are identical twins, even those person will be having different fingerprints. Okay. Hence, since each molecule, they will be having a specific FTIR absorption pattern. Hence, this region, it is regarded as the fingerprint region. Okay. However, in many cases, enantiomers, they may show similar IR spectra. Okay. Now, how many number of vibrations it can be shown by a molecule? It is being given by this equation. If it is a linear molecule, say I am having ABA, so it is a linear molecule. So how many patterns it would be having, uh, how many vibrations it would be having? So it is given as 3N minus 5, 3, what is N? N is the number of the atoms in the molecule. So it is 3, so 3 multiplied by 3, 9 minus 5, it comes up to be 4, 
vibrations you will be getting okay. however if it would be a this aba is a non linear molecule then you would get 3 multiplied by 3 minus 6 9 minus 6 equals to 3 vibrations you would be getting okay. then there is another rule and increase in the bond strength it leads to the corresponding increase in the frequency okay now why this is so this is because if you say energy is equal to h mu right now if your bond strength is increasing that means to vibrate that energy or uh, to vibrate that uh, bond you will be needing higher energy if you need higher energy h is constant so you need a higher frequency so however we have also said that wave number it is equal to um, mu by c wave number it is equal to mu by c so wave number is directly proportional to the mu right and many a cases we interchangeably use either frequency or the wave number <clears throat> right so in this case what is happening your wave number will also increase so as you go towards the higher wave number you can understand that there would be an increase in the bond strength okay so what the badges rule say an increase in the bond strength leads to corresponding increase in the frequency and vice versa okay now this energy changes it depends on three properties the first one is the mass of the atoms that is present in a molecule arrangement of the atoms as i already told you within the molecule okay and lastly the strength of the bond so how much energy you will be needing to initiate the vibration within the molecules it would depend on the mass of the atoms that is constituting the molecule <coughs> arrangement of these atoms and the strength of the bonds <coughs> by considering the ab bond as a spring the frequency of absorbance can be calculated as a wave number which is given by 1 by 2 pi c under root of k by mu where k is given by the spring constant and mu is given by ma mb divided by ma a plus mb where ma and mb are the mass of the atoms a and b so this is the relationship of the if you are having a diatomic molecule how the mass of a and b will be affecting the uh, frequency of the vibrations okay with this i will stop today if you have any questions uh, we can discuss and we'll be starting the next one in the next class